welcome in to another broadcast of Life as God Intended. I'm Don. Thanks for tuning in today. Well, today is kind of a special day for me as I end a 40-day water fast. Uh, the fast began uh, June 18th and has continued uh, for 40 days, as I mentioned. Uh, last day was yesterday, Saturday, July 27th. And today, Sunday morning, the 28th, I will begin to break uh, the water fast very slowly to give my body an opportunity to begin to recover from having uh, this rest and shutting down and allowing uh, it organs and different things to take a break. So I'll introduce some uh, beef bone broth uh, today to begin to allow the stomach to begin to function again. The reality is I didn't stop eating during the 40 day fast. You say, wait a minute, Don, you just said you did a water fast. Well, I did, but during a fast, your body continues uh, to eat, it's called autophagy. It's a compound word which means eat oneself. So autophagy means to eat oneself. And during the fast, particularly after the first five to seven days, depending on one's body weight, the body shifts from uh, using a fuel source of sugar, which most of us have too much sugar in our diets and it's hidden in many products. So whether you realize it or not, uh, a lot of sugar. So the body uses one of two uh, sources of fuel, either sugar or fat. Now it prefers fat, but because there's so much sugar, the sugar has to be consumed first before the fat can be burned. And so it takes, as I mentioned, five to seven days, depending on the individual, to break through that sugar wall, if you will. And then the body begins to uh, use up stored uh, fat cells. And so you don't really stop eating. And uh, fasting is not starvation either. Starvation does not begin until the body has consumed all of the fat reserves in it. And so it's safe to fast, it's biblical to fast. Daniel did a 21 day fast. Uh, Jesus did a 40 day fast. There are many records uh, in scripture. In fact, I wanna share some verses uh, this morning um, relative to fasting. And in my journey with the Lord, he has led me to fast on occasions. And I, I would like to speak to that as well. It's important that it's something that God leads us to do, just like anything else. We are derivative creatures. Uh, we derive what we do from an either or spiritual source, either God or Satan. So not all fasting is of the Lord. And scripture specifically speaks of doing fasting unto the Lord. And so it's important that we always allow the Lord to check our motives. And notice how I said that it's not us trying to search our hearts or figure out what we're doing as much as it is to be aware of the person in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ as our life, if in fact we're Christians, obviously if we're not Christians, we don't have that privilege. But it's, it's as the psalmist said, as David said, search me, O God, and know my heart, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And so in all that we do, it should be a relational journey uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, including fasting. And so we just don't set out to fast just because it's a good thing to do. It may be a good thing to do, but motives matter. And of course, 
the direction and the ultimate destination that one reaches relative to whatever they do is vitally important. And so fasting should be done unto the Lord. And as I mentioned in my journey with the Lord over many decades now, um, my first fast was a 21 day fast, which I'd never fasted that long. And that was many, many years ago. And I was under the, a, a doctor's supervision while doing so. And at the end of that 21 day fast, I had lost 33 and a half pounds. And I thought that was quite an amazing accomplishment. I learned much through it, uh, spiritually, uh, psychologically, uh, through temptation and uh, victory, and obviously the physical changes that occurred to my body. And then a number of years later, I did another 21 day fast. And then uh, about four or five years ago, um, I became overweight significantly, and I decided to do what's referred to as keto fasting. And so I did uh, what's intermittent fasting, one meal a day. And I began that, I believe, around the end of May of that year and uh, fasted for intermittent fasting for 17 days. And uh, I think it was the 17th or the 18th day, it was Father's Day. And so the family wanted to go out to eat. So we did. Um, we have a large family, so there was 20, pl 20 plus of us. So to find a restaurant that was uh, large enough to seat those number, uh, we had to go to an Italian restaurant. Now, of course, it's not like we have anything against Italian food. I love Italian food. That's the problem. I love food. But we all went to that uh, place, and obviously there's all kinds of carbs there. And um, there wasn't really anything that was keto. <laughs> and so in one day I had gained two pounds. And the next morning when I got on the scale, I was completely disgusted with myself. And I decided, well, I'll just fast a complete day. I won't do the intermittent fasting. Well, that led one day at a time as unto the Lord, never really recognizing where he would lead me. And that one day fast turned into 10, turned into 21, turned into 30. And then as I got close to 40 days, uh, I think it was around day 37, I looked at my weight loss, combining that with the 17 days of weight loss that I had done through intermittent fasting. And I decided that I didn't want to end at 40 days that I would go 43 days because after the 17 days of keto intermittent fasting and the 43 days of absolute fasting in 60 days, I would have lost 60 pounds. So that's exactly what I did at that time. Then I went to my doctor, I got the lab work done and saw him and all of my results were just amazing. And then I maintained uh, that uh, keto intermittent fasting for the next six months and kept my weight in check. You can always expect, depending on your diet, depending on how often you eat, you can definitely expect to gain back anywhere from seven to 10 pounds, even if you do intermittent fasting because when you do a prolonged fast, your digestive system's completely cleaned out, and uh, you know there is weight relative to that. And so when you do break a fast, you will immediately, uh, within just days, uh, gain five to 10 pounds. But depending on how often you eat, some people eat two, three times a day, which frankly I don't recommend, um, then you can gain much more than that. And so over the course of that next six months, I did the intermittent fasting, one meal a day. I kept my body weight in check. But then at the end of that year, I believe it was the end of 2019, 
if my memory serves me correctly, I, um, I, had, a, I had a hernia. And so I had to go into the hospital for outpatient uh, hernia surgery. And then I, of course I had to rehab for a couple of weeks. And during that rehab, uh, I found myself eating and gaining some weight. And so once the doctor gave me the all clear to go back to a normal activity, I began another fast. And uh, I fasted, uh, I was going to fast 21 days and I fasted all the, through 28 days. And at the end of 28 days, uh, I had lost significant weight. And at the end of 28 days, I was extremely hungry. <laughs> and so I began to eat. And it kind of lost my way at that point in the sense that I just kind of forgot about uh, being concerned about my weight and uh, basically ate just anything. I kind of got off the keto diet and uh, ate as many carbs or whatever I wanted to eat. <clears throat> and as such, in the course of a year's time, I had gained significant weight again. And so then it was a year ago uh, that I went on a 40 day fast and uh, was very grateful. I never had imagined that God would lead me on a second 40 day fast, but he did. And I was so grateful to the Lord at the time, I thought that would probably be the last 40 day fast that I would ever attempt because they are difficult. Um, and yet God enabled me to persevere through that fast and I came to the end of it. And then since that time, I have uh, maintained the intermittent fasting, one meal a day. However, I counsel all day and so when I come home in the evening, I'm hungry and so I eat. That's not necessarily the proper time to eat. I would suggest if you want to eat the most ideal time of the day uh, for intermittent fasting, it would be from two o'clock to six o'clock. That gives you a four hour window um, and then it gives your body plenty of time to digest before you rest for the night. That's not what I was able to do because I was counseling during that time. I don't get finished with counseling often until quarter to six in the evening. And so then I come home and I eat and then I go to bed. <laughs> well, even though I was doing this intermittent fasting, over the course of a year, I gained back about 20 pounds. And even with that, I was still overweight from the last fast. And so this year, uh, the Lord had been prompting me, oh, probably since January uh, to do another fast. And I kept saying, yes, I need to do it. But of course, uh, fasting, um, it does interrupt a lot of things. It interrupts your social life, your family life. Um, it, it affects you uh, mentally, physically. Um, both both puts a strain on you, but it also, it, I, I don't wanna put just the negative on it because it's more than a negative. There's a significant positive. So as much as it puts on uh, maybe sometimes a physical, um, I, I don't wanna call it fatigue so much as just a, a feeling of kind of almost ickiness and like your body's eating itself because it literally is. There is a beauty in restraining the body. Paul talks about that, about uh, beating our bodies under. And so the, uh, the whole idea of not giving in to the, the selfish tendencies of the flesh, which even though we've all uh, been redeemed and in Christ based on the finished work of the cross 2000 years ago, that does not mean that we do not struggle with the flesh patterns of sin that are still recorded in the desires of the soul. And so uh, those are not our battle, but the battle's the Lord's. However, we need to recognize 
that in order for God to win that battle over our flesh, we have to choose to participate with him. And unless we're participating with him, uh, Satan will use those flesh patterns to continue to uh, drag us in to character expressions that are sinful and contrary to who we are in Christ. And so um, there's a beauty in fasting because although you might say that temptation is more prevalent, so is the presence and the power of the living Lord Jesus within us. And so, yes, there is a huge psychological battle as well during fasting, because really after the first five to 10 days, fasting becomes a mental fast. The body is pretty much not craving hunger. It's not like you don't feel like you're hunger, hungry, but that is more of your mind than the physical. Yes, the physical is changing and changing radically the longer you go. But the battle's really in the mind. And remember, the battle's the Lord's. And so set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. All these scriptures that we've read and known become amplified because of the greater awareness of the person and presence of the living Lord Jesus Christ in us. So our, I, I don't wanna say that fasting um, makes you more spiritual, because it does not. But does fasting allow you to be more in tuned with the Lord Jesus Christ? Does fasting allow you to be more spiritually in tune? Absolutely. 100%. I can say through testimony, having fasted two 221-day two fasts, a 43-day 43 43 fast, and now two 40-day fasts, that... When I'm counseling one-on-one um, -on -one or with couples, I can tell you from, from experience that I'm never more in tune to the Lord. I know that he is doing what he's wanting to do in those sessions. That's the best counseling I've ever done in my life during fasts. Now, prior to that fast and maybe or prior to that counseling session or after that counseling session, you know, I definitely sometimes feel the weakness and I'm praying, Lord, I don't think I can do this. Um, but again, that's healthy. That's a great spiritual reminder. I can't, only he can. That's the essence of repentance. That's the essence of a walk of faith. And so that's a very beautiful place to be in a day-to-day -day relationship with him. And so there are many, many ba uh, benefits to fasting. Obviously, Jesus uh, was um, led of the Spirit. King James says he was driven of the Spirit into the wilderness uh, to be tempted of the devil for 40 days while he prayed and fasted. And so, again, it's a fast unto the Lord. It's a fast that will allow the Lord to do a deeper work in our spiritual lives, cutting away some of the selfish flesh tendencies that we have. Uh, allow the Lord to work in our minds, renewing the mind with the mind of Christ. Obviously, he brought his mind with him. Allowing the Lord to, to a, do a deep cleanse. And by the way, phys physically, this autophagy uh, destroys cancer, destroys diabetes, destroys all kinds of diseases, restores stem cells, uh, repairs uh, damaged cells, uh, brings health back. You know, I have a metabolic scale that I've been getting on every day during this 40-day fast. I've lost over 40 pounds during this 40-day fast. And at the beginning, all of my metabolic readings were unhealthy. Now I am under by over a pound my suggested weight for my height and body build, which I'm just so grateful for. Uh, I look better, I feel better, and my uh, metabolic age 
uh, went from 74, that's because of the unhealthy condition of the weight and everything. It went from a 74 to a 70. Now I'm 71. So they, they claim, and I believe that fasting will prolong life. Uh, there's plenty of doctors now on YouTube that you can follow that have been regular MDs that did the traditional surgeries and such that discovered the benefits of fasting and now they switched their practices to what I would call more ministries and they're helping people with terminally ill diseases and other things through fasting to gain health. And so, um, you know, there's, there are huge benefits to fasting. But let me just read a few scriptures in closing. And this is, this is not the end on the subject, but I just wanted to share a testimony today because it's such a significant day for me personally. And I wanted to share that with you. I felt prompted to do so by the Lord, even though I was hesitant. I don't wanna make this about myself. It's not about me. This is about Christ. This is about what Christ done in and through me. Yes, I did have to participate. He didn't just do it for me. It's always a grace, faith connection. That is the Christian life. It always is, is God's activity and our receptivity to that activity. But here are just a few verses on the subject of fasting. Isaiah the prophet says, is not this the fast that I have chosen? to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Now I couldn't help when I read that to hear the Lord speak to me and say, okay, there was a context obviously that Isaiah was speaking to in his day. But there's also an application to you and I. And I believe that when we fast, it not only looses the bands of wickedness of sin. So that would be in the area of temptation, the, the area of psychological, maybe the area of giving ourselves to something that we shouldn't. But I believe it also looses the bands that bind us physically, that are destroying our health. Remember, the enemy comes to to kill, to steal, to destroy. I also believe that it looses the bands of these fleshly soul ties that we still have that in just normal walk of life are not gonna be broken unless we fast and pray. He goes on to say, to undo the heavy burdens. There's also the application of what are you facing? What kind of trials and problems? What kind of struggles are you going through? Sometimes God would lead you into a fast to help you to break that heavy burden, to bring release, and then that the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. There's a freedom that comes after fasting. It's like, it's like a new lease on life. But when you get away and go on vacation, if it's actually a vacation and you didn't run yourself ragged when you went on vacation and you actually relaxed and rested, when you come back, you feel, you feel new, you feel refreshed. You come back to your house, everything looks different, it looks bright, it looks new. That's because you've been refreshed. Fasting does that. It, it releases the oppressed. It allows us to experience a freedom. It breaks every yoke. And remember, Jesus used the word yoke. I believe it's in Matthew uh, 11 or 4.11. One of those chapters, you could look it up, where he says, come unto me all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so there we see that God wants to break us from the fleshly, satanic yokes of the world, the flesh and the devil, allowing us to experience a greater union in Christ in his yoke, because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So in Matthew 6, uh, I believe this is Jesus, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, 
but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Once again, kind of reiterating the fact that there is great value in fasting. Uh, Joel, Joel chapter 2 verse 12, Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And then Daniel said, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three weeks were fulfilled. That's obviously the Daniel fast. And then in Acts 13, 3, and when they fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. That's obviously the blessing of fasting. And then of course, here's the temptation of fasting. Uh, Luke chapter four of Jesus and Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And I will read maybe one more. And that will be Exodus chapter 34 and verse 28. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. And he did nothing. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Obviously, speaking of Moses, when he was uh, receiving the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai from the Lord, he had fasted and prayed for 40 days. And so, not everybody can fast. That's obvious. There's medical issues. You have to consult your doctor. Not everybody's in good health. But fasting does spring forth health speedily. And so I just wanted to share my personal testimony. It's not medical advice by no means. And so I just, uh, my prayer for you is as God leads you day by day, that you would be receptive to him and that you would experience life as God intended. <laughs>